Bonjour. Hey, Mr. Duora here. What a surprise, hey? Like, right, Mr. Duora was going to be somebody completely different. I mean, you make these videos all the time. Hey, what can I say? Welcome aboard, and let's do some math. First, we're going to start off with some fluency practice. Just some practice to help us stay tuned, tuned up, I suppose, in good shape when it comes to mathematical uh, fractions and so forth. So just counting by fours, just counting by fours, you guys. We could do this. You can do this at home. You know, do it with me. Okay, it's pretty simple, right? One-fourth if we're counting by fourths here. Four-fourths, five-fourths, six-fourths, seven-fourths. You get the... Uh, the general idea here. We're just kind of we're just counting by fours. Seems pretty easy, right? Well, this time let's go ahead and we're going to count by fours. But every time we come to a whole, let's go ahead and name it as such. Okay? So here, one fourth, two fours, three fours, and then of course four fours is just one whole. And then we're going to continue on. Five fours, six fours, seven fours, eight fours. Ah, that's two holes, right? Two. We could keep going on nine-fourths, and on and on and on. This time, let's name all fractions greater than one as a mixed number. So here we have one-fourth, of course, two-fourths, three-fourths, one. Now I have one and one-fourth, right? One and, well, I almost put one and a half. I want to keep it in fourths, okay? One and three-quarters, right? And then we have two and two and a quarter, okay? Two and two quarters, and all right. And we could do this with fourths. We could do this with uh, fifths. We could do it with six different, just different ways uh, that we can practice. Okay, well then let's get on with our lesson. Mr. War, what are we here for? Well, we're here for students will be able to divide a unit fraction by a whole number. Now, we've been going back and forth. This is Eureka. This is module four, lesson 26. Let's go ahead and take a look at this problem here. This is problem one. It says here Logan, our good friend Logan, gives some pans of brownies to his three friends to share equally. What a pal. What a good guy willing to share his brownies. If he has three pans of brownies, how many pans of brownies will each friend receive? Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, Mr. Wara, this is just like the last time. This is really easy. We don't really have to think too hard. And I don't want you to think too hard. Let's go ahead and ask some questions about this anyway, because what we want to do is we want to create a division expression. So if the three pans of brownies are divided equally with how many friends? Three friends. Then the division sentence would be your three, numero tres. So three, and we're going to take that, the, the whole, the dividend, Divided by the size, remember the sized group, which we know the sized group is three because he has three friends. When we divide that, we're going to end up with one, one pan. That means each of each of his friends will receive one pan of brownies. I know, you're thinking, ooh, that was really easy. All right, well, then you know what? Let's challenge ourselves, shall we? Yeah, welcome to the dark side. No, just kidding. Sorry, I don't know why that came from. Luke Skywalker. Now, let's go on. Problem two. Mr. War, please keep it together. Okay. It says, Logan gives some pans of brownies to his, three, okay, to his three friends to share equally. Okay, I put that up there again just to remind ourselves of the problem that we're working on. But look, now it says if he has one pan of brownies, how many pans of brownies will each friend receive? A little more challenging, eh? So we're actually imagining that, you know, Logan has this one pan of brownies. If he gave it to his, his three friends to share equally, really, what portion of the brownies would each friend receive? It surely wouldn't be one whole pan. Write it like we've done before. Take our one pan, which is our one whole, right? We're dividing it by that equally sized group, which is still three because he's going to share it with three of his friends. And it doesn't say that he gets any of these. No, it's just his friends he's given in these two. I guess Logan already had the brownies. He was probably in the kitchen while they were baking the brownies, and he was probably stealing little brownies from the pan, or uh, from the dough, should we say, and now he's going to give his three pans away. I don't know. I, I'm really imagining, aren't I? So 
That means that each of his friends are going to get one third of the pan. He did start off with one pan, but when he divided it equally with his three friends, each one ends up with one third pan. So let's go ahead and model this. Model, model, model. That's what Mr. War says all the time. Model. Okay. I know. It's just part of math. Modeling, you know. I want to draw a kind of a bar and shade in representing one pan of brownies. So let me go ahead and do that. So here I just want to show that this is our one, our one whole pan, okay, of brownies. And I'm going to show that this hole, okay, is just full, right, with brownies, yummy brownies. He wants to share that equally uh, with his three friends. So I suppose I should put in my, my thirds here. Well, one friend, another friend, third friend. This would be one third. And we can actually crisscross this because that's the amount that each friend would receive. Each friend would get one third pan of the brownies. One is three of what number? So one is three of what number? And of course we know three thirds makes one. But just to be sure, let's make sure that we check our work. How can we check a division problem? You may have recalled in a previous video, remember we multiply the answer and the divisor. That's the quotient and the divisor. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's take our one third, which that was our quotient here, one third multiplied by the divisor, in this case, which was three. Well, one times three over three is the same as writing it this way, because three can be represented as a fraction over one. So now we have three over three, and three divided by three is equal to one. Does that get us back to we our dividend? It does. I know. Curly lines, my loop-de-loops. Woohoo! Yes, that was fun. Well, let's keep making these problems more difficult. Yes. Oh, no. It's going to be a half pen. It's like we're going to become Jedi Masters. See, Logan, again, gives pans of brownies to his three friends to share equally. If he has a half pan of brownies, how many pans of brownies will each friend receive? Ooh, I see a pattern here. I see what's happening here is each time it's the, the friends are getting a little bit less because we're starting off with less brownies from the beginning. Okay, so again here what we're starting off with now is we're not starting off with one, but we're actually starting off with a half. All right, so here's my tape diagram. Let me go ahead and I'm actually going to show this as a whole pan of brownies. So this is kind of like a whole, but we're not starting off with a whole, we're starting off with a half. I'm actually going to split this in half to, to show that. So here's the half, pair, half pan of brownies. Nothing over here. Okay? We have our half pan. Now with our half pan, now he wants to share that equally with three friends. So since I've split this half pan into thirds, then I'm going to go ahead and, and do the same thing over here, even though there's nothing over here. And so this way, so what fraction of the pan will each friend receive? Well, now you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So actually, each friend is going to receive one sixth. And here we had, again, brownies in this half of the pan. And it, it's this one equal piece here that will show how much each friend will receive, which is one sixth. So therefore, taking three, three friends, and sharing equally one half pan of brownies means that each friend would get one sixth of the brownies. I don't know, is it just me? Or is this stuff is like easy peasy, lemon squeezy? Yes, I think so. It is a cakewalk. So let's move on to problem four. Yet the problem, ooh, they just want to keep getting more challenging. Now each time we end up with a smaller fraction. Now we only have one third pan of brownies. My goodness, Logan, are you eating all the brownies? <laughs> Where are they going? We're going to go ahead and show this whole pan. We'll show the whole pan. Okay, one whole pan of brownies. Well, the pan itself. This is just kind of showing roughly about where the third is. That's eh, a little bit off. I can live with that. 
to slide it over. Woo, I cheated. Okay. You didn't see that, okay? Close your eyes. Feel the force among you. No, just kidding. Okay, so we have our thirds. So this is the only part where there's any brownies, is this section here. And this is what he's willing to share. So then I ask, okay, I need to share this section equally? All right. That means that I'm going to have to divide that. Do I try purple? I'm going to try to divide that into thirds. So that third pan now is been divided into thirds. Well, since I had that third into thirds, I'm going to go ahead and divide that third into thirds and this third into thirds to keep it consistent so that it's all equal. What's interesting here is now out of that one whole, I can base it and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine equal pieces here. So that one unit here where that one friend is going to get is that one ninth. And that was what our division sentence could be. We had one third divided by the three friends, right? The three friends, because that was the size group, and is going to be one ninth. Now we can check our work like we did before by showing, well, if we if that's the quotient, I can take that quotient multiplied by the divisor, right? And now I end up with three over nine, which we can reduce by dividing out a common factor of three. Okay, leaving that one and that three, that would make that one third, and yes, it comes right back to our divisor. I'm telling you, this stuff is just easy. Next page, now we're looking at, okay, let's go ahead and solve this problem here. We have one fifth divided by two. As we had, did in previous problems, that this is our one whole. Now I can draw solid lines to show my fifths, because I have one fifth. So I'm showing my one-fifth. My one-fifth is being divided by, by two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw a dotted line to show that that one-fifth right there is, is divided by two, two equal pieces. And now our one-fifth divided by two, you can see here, becomes, look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we end up with one 10. So 1 fifth divided by 2 is 1 tenth. How many tenths are there in 1 fifth? There's 2 tenths in 1 fifth. So let's go ahead and write this down. 2 tenths divided by 2 would be equal to, yeah, 1 tenth. We can kind of think of it another way. What if we took 1 fifth and say that that's equal to 2 times some quantity. We have to find the missing factor. Well, that would be 1 tenth. Now let's go ahead and check our work like we did before. We need to know what the quotient was. So our quotient was 1 tenth. So can we take 1 tenth and multiply it by the divisor, uh, which was 2? Now we have 2 over 10, which is equal to 1 fifth. And again, it brings us back to that dividend. Okie dokie, let's move on to problem six. If Madison pours one half liter of water into four bottles, putting an equal amount in each, how many liters of water uh, will be in each bottle? We're going to go ahead and model our thinking again. First thing is, is we need to make sure that we read and understand the problem. How many liters of water does uh, Madison have? She has a half a liter. Uh, that's all we have. A half a liter is being poured into how many bottles? Four. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we're, we, we definitely have to divide, right? The division sentence should be one half divided by four. So I need to divide the divi dividend by one half by the divisor, which is four. Now I can draw one half and cut it into four equal parts. But I can also think of as a half is equal to four times some quantity. So here's my one whole liter of water, which I don't have one liter, I have a half. And I'm showing this so that that way it'll make it easier for, easier for us to solve this problem. And then there's going to be four bottles. So you can see 
I can divide that into fourths. Now I have my fourths listed here. So I'm taking my one half, divide, my one half divided by four. But I'm going to go ahead and do the same over here. Let's do these in fourths too. Now we know based on that, we actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight eighths making up that one whole. So that means this one quantity here is going to be one eighth. Is that true? One eighth times four, will that equal one half? It will. So our problem here says one half divided by four, in this case, is equal to one eighth. We can check our work. One eighth times four is equal to four over eight, which is the same as one half. But by doing that, and I didn't label this one here, but you can see that this here was one eighth based on making all those units equal. So no matter what strategy that you use, uh, you can get to the same result. The tape diagram, by visualizing it, helps us greatly. I know that we're making our way to the end of another math video, but I just want to emphasize how important it is that we model mathematics by putting up tape diagrams, number lines, anyways, it's going to help us get that result. Now, as always, my friends, live long and prosper.